The Russian authorities have arrested Vadim Shamarin, the head of the country's main directorate of communications, for alleged involvement in a bribery case, officials have told Russian media. Shamarin, who is also the deputy to the chief of the general staff, is the fourth senior Russian defense official said to have been arrested in criminal cases in April and May. An official with the 235th Garrison Military Court said on Thursday, as quoted by several Russian media outlets, that Lt. Gen. Shamarin is suspected of receiving an especially large bribe. If found guilty, the official faces up to 15 years in prison. The 53-year-old general has served as the head of Russia's main directorate of communications since 2021. He is also a deputy to the chief of the general staff, Valery Gerasimov. The court official said, as quoted by RBK, that Shamarin was detained for two months on Wednesday. Commerçant reported, citing sources, that the Russian authorities had conducted a search as part of a bribery case, adding that the lieutenant general had been taken in for questioning to the main military investigative office of Russia's investigative committee. Ukraine is winning the missile drone war, Russian air defense is in chaos. Ukraine continues to sink the Russian fleet, Kyiv is winning the missile drone war. Former Royal Navy officer and air defense expert Tom Sharp writes about this in a column for The Telegraph. He noted that the intensity of Ukraine's attacks on Russian ships, port infrastructure and energy facilities is amazing. At the end of last week, there was a complex attack on the port of Novorossiysk, the Twapsi oil refinery and the adjacent oil terminal. The attack was carried out by drones, including naval ones. The Russian defense tried to counteract them, but in vain. On Sunday, ATA CMS struck a pier in Sevastopol, sinking the minesweeper Kurovets, one of the few Russian warships that did not flee Crimea for the relative safety of Novorossiysk. There are also reports that a Karakurt-class missile Corvette was sunk during the same attack. Since it was potentially armed with a long-range and extremely powerful caliber missile, this loss would be of great significance to the Russian Federation if confirmed. Besides losing another ship, this is important on several levels. First, many believed that ATA CMS's accuracy of about 9 meters was insufficient for use against ships. Additionally, the models in Ukrainian hands disperse large quantities of grenade-sized submissions, negating the need for a high precision. But it is unlikely that missiles with sub-munitions could have caused the ship to sink. However, 
Such missiles are armor-piercing and can destroy tanks. Hitting a ship with this missile is guaranteed to cause significant damage and uncontrolled fire caused by submissions can cause the ship to sink. It is quite possible that the Ukrainians actually used a variant of the ATA CMS with a larger unitary warhead weighing 213 kilograms. This could certainly sink the ship, Sharp writes. However, if the Ukrainians have a unitary ATA CMS combat unit, it seems strange that they did not use some of them to destroy the Kirsch Bridge. Now that the Russians have built a railway to transport goods along the land bridge north of Azov from Russia to Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge is no longer an extremely important logistics supply route. But this is Ukraine's obvious goal. What is clear is that Russian air defense systems are still in a state of chaos. The previous ATA CMS attack destroyed a battery of S-400 anti-aircraft missiles and about 10 aircraft at Belbek Airfield. The strike exposed the limitations of the much-touted S-400. As the expert writes, in order to successfully protect against this type of attack, you need to have three levels. Prevent, detect and destroy. The alert feature relies on intelligence, satellite surveillance and other inputs to let you know that an attack is imminent. If you are smart and have the right tools at hand, you can hit the enemy before he launches.